Welcome back, everyone. It's great to be with you here another week in our course, Introduction to Spirituality. Again, I've really been enjoying reading your discussion board posts, and uh, as you can see, I'm trying a little something different uh, with this video. It's it's called a smart camera, and it kind of moves a bit as I talk, and I'm um, trying to use a, a more high-powered microphone, too, to see how that goes. So um, it may pick up some noises in the background of my home as I'm going along. <laughs> if you hear any screaming, don't be alarmed. Uh, it's just my children enjoying uh, their video game <laughs> right now. But um, hopefully this video will turn out. Uh, we're going to take a look at Father Louis Boyer's book, Introduction to the Spiritual Life, uh, the second part of his chapter three on prayer specifically methods of prayer. So in here he's talking about the Ignatian method of prayer that highly engages the human imagination through the course of meditation. So we're talking about this mental prayer, also known as the prayer of meditation. These kind of, this style of prayer is really guided by rich texts, especially the biblical text. Uh, scenes from the Gospels entering into the mysteries of the life of Christ. Um, and when we read the Ignatian spiritual exercises, maybe you've done that before, um, we find that St. Ignatius wants to focus step by step on the higher faculties of the soul. Think through this mystery of the life of Christ through your intellect or your understanding. Think through this mystery according to your memory. Think through this mystery according to your will. Trying to engage each of these classic three higher faculties of the soul directly through the course of the meditation. Um, so our class, we're not going to get really into the uh, Ignatian spiritual exercises. I do so in the graduate level course I teach at the seminary, but in this course, we just reference them in passing here uh, and know that there's a lot of great content in those Ignatian spiritual exercises, the four weeks, all the meditations he provides along the way, uh, very similar to St. Francis de Sales in that respect. Um, but on page 112 in the book, we get a quote from the spiritual exercises uh, at the bottom of the page. St. Ignatius writes, For it is not the abundance of knowledge that fills the soul and satisfies it, but the awareness and the interior tasting of the truths that it med meditates. So I really like this quote a lot because he's saying it's not the quantity, but the quality of the meditation. That's what matters. Uh, as Catholics, we have such a rich treasury of traditions of prayer and devotions, spiritual readings, all the scripture. Um, and we often can find ourselves trying to do too much and um, get worn out, get frustrated, or as if prayer is a matter of stacking up, you know, vocal prayer and vocal prayer and vocal prayer or uh, meditation on meditation on meditation, as if the more, you know, meditations you can do through the course of the day, the better, or the more rosaries you can pray, the better. Uh, and there's something virtuous about this trying to do a lot for the Lord and other people, definitely. But sometimes um, more is not always more but sometimes less is more. Think about physical exercise. If I'm going to get my body in better shape, uh, it's, it's progressive. It's little by little. If I went in the weight room from zero to three hours a day and just was pumping the iron and all these different exercises, I would damage my body instead of the approach where, okay, I'm going to, it's called the law of gradualism. I'm going to go I'm going to start with a few exercises and a few reps, and I'm going to build it up. Same thing with running. 
or any any real human activity, uh, we don't want to bite off more than we can chew. Same thing for the spiritual life. This is what St. Ignatius is saying, and it's a great takeaway point. It is not the abundance of knowledge that fills the soul and satisf satisfies it, but the awareness and the interior tasting of the truths that it meditates. The awareness, interior tasting of the truths. And St. Ignatius advises when you're doing meditation and you come upon something that's starting to really stir your soul, starting to move you, he says, dwell in that, stay in that. Don't rush to something else next. But if God's starting to speak to you, if God's starting to move with a particular uh, thought, meaning, um, feeling even, stay with it. Linger with it. Ruminate on it. Don't be in a rush. It's kind of like a garden, too. If you go into a beautiful flower garden, there's all these different kinds of flowers. But you really want to appreciate each kind. You have to stay with each kind, one by one. Take time to smell the flower. Take time uh, to uh, gaze upon the flower, all the, all the various parts, and so on. So this is a great point to start off. And now I'm just going to uh, go rather quickly through the rest of this chapter. Chapter The Sulpician method of prayer, um, going back to St. Sulpius, who was a late 4th, early 5th century French saint, influenced very much by St. Martin of Tours. Uh, St. Sulpius became a priest. His Latin name... Supicius Severus. And uh, later on, a society of St. Sulpice was founded by Father Jean-Jacques Ollier in 1641. So later, much later in the 17th century, I believe in Paris. And this was a, a society to help prepare diocesan seminarians for the priesthood. The Society of St. Sulpice is still is active um, today, uh, especially with seminary formation. And this is a very interesting uh, formula or method of, of prayer. Uh, and uh, the Father Odier uh, was said to have gone blind for a while and some kind of miraculous healing happened. And then he really turned his life over to God and, and he really lived this life of prayer. So here's what he hands on. It's very simple and straightforward. But sometimes if you're trying to teach people who are new at, at Christian prayer, in spirituality, how, how do you go about it? This is a nice, helpful way just to get things going. Three steps, as we see here. Adoration, communion, and cooperation. Adoration, to think about Jesus before my eyes. Like in the Blessed Sacrament especially, I'm going to adore Christ. And there's this exterior dimension of it, Jesus before my eyes. But then it moves toward communion, and this is the meaning of receiving the Lord in, the, in uh, his precious body and blood in the Eucharist. Jesus drawn into my heart from outside to inside. Adoration, communion, and then cooperation, the third stage. Jesus in my hands. Um, that is to put my life into conformity with his and that what I do with my hands is what he would do with his hands in this world. So a beautiful three stages of, of this prayer and the method of St. Sulpice, Sulpician method. Bouyer goes on to talk about um, various kinds of meditation, especially Lexio, reading different texts, reading texts very slowly though. This is the key. Um, not too much, but tends to pare it down where less is more. Um, he talks about prayers like the Our Father to pray this slowly. Our Father who art in heaven. You slow it down and it lights up in a way that it tends not to when we, we go really fast with it. I think it was St. Teresa of Avila who maybe said, um, 
when she prayed to our father, just she was stuck on the word hour. There was so much meaning in the word hour. She could just stay right there with it and not feel she had to go any further sometimes, you know, like to, to say our father. He's our father, your father, my father, your creator, my creator, our creator. He's my father. He's my maker. So it's that kind of thing where each word, you're kind of squeezing it for all the, the juice of meaning that could pour out of it. Page 117 and following, uh, Bouillard talks about the rosary, the awesome prayer of the rosary, thinking of St. Dominic uh, of Osma, who founded the Dominicans and really spread the devotion of the rosary in the um, late 12th, early 13th uh, centuries. But he spent some time talking about this, very helpful things he says. I won't go through them all here. Keep this video short, aiming for about 12 minutes, coming right up. On page 129, we have a turn toward um, Eastern Christianity, 128, 129. This hesychasm, uh, going back to the Byzantine mystic St. Simeon, the new theologian, the basic idea to have Jesus enter into one's heart, just like that Sulpician prayer is talking about, Jesus entering into my heart, dwelling there, circulating there, this divine love. So hesychasm from hesychia in Greek word that means quietness. And the idea here is that all of life would become a constant prayer. And in Eastern Christianity, we have the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the monks will pray this over and over throughout the day, nonstop. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Oh, or just saying the name Jesus over and over. That we could fulfill what St. Paul says, pray without ceasing. Thanks so much to you on the discussion board.